John Cork and I did my presentation on options trading. So what are options? Options are derivatives, derivatives of shares of an asset. So each option an investor holds, he controls 100 shares of that asset. So options are a contractual agreement between two parties, the buyer and the seller. And um, options are extremely volatile and change at a much higher rate than other investment tools that most uh, investment firms use currently. There are main, the two main types of options are call options and put options. Right here you can see this lady, she's uh, starting an option contract. So she's offering her, fi her 500 shares to this buyer over here for a premium. And this buyer over here is buying the rights to those 500 shares at a specified strike price that they both have agreed upon. So option buyers and sellers explain. So investors can particip participate in either side of the process by buying or selling calls and puts. Buyers of the contract have the right to buy the underlying asset at a specific strike price. Sellers of the contract are contractually obligated to sell away the underlying asset to the buyer if he exercises his rights at that strike price. Uh, statistically, it is more profitable to be an option seller in the long run than an option buyer. Uh, options, right here, you can see uh, some options contracts on the famous app Robinhood. And right here you can see the amount of contracts the uh, investors are holding, 42, 210, and 90. And then you can see the uh, current price of the options contracts. And then you can see the price that they paid average for the contracts. You can also see the expiration dates of the contracts right here. And you can see the overall equity of the positions. So options allow investors to have any assumption that they possibly could on an underlying. With stocks, there's only two main assumptions, to short the stock or to long the stock. Options allow investors to have any assumption and percentage assumptions even in either way, long or short. The, the four main option assumption or the four main option setups that I want to talk about are the long call, the short call, the long put, and the short put. Each setup is very different from the other and they have very unique and specific advantages to each of them that need to be understood by the investor to capitalize on it fully. So call options. Call options give the buyer the right to buy the underlying asset at a specific price. Buying call options would be considered a really ex bullish strategy and they're used when the buyer thinks that there'll be a huge rise in the stock price in, a, in the uh, life of the contract. Call options can also be sold by investors to create a bearish stance on an underlying if they don't think that option prices will continue to rise. Put options. So put options give the owner the right to sell the underlying at a specific strike price. Put options are bought when the investor thinks that the underlying will have a slump in price and decre decrease in price. They're often used to hedge larger positions from falling very quickly in price. So an investor could hold thousands and thousands of shares of an asset and use put contracts to protect him in case of a huge economic downturn. So the four main option assumptions that investors should understand to fully understand options trading are first, the long call. The long call is the most important and it's buying calls. This would be considered the most bullish strategy and it's extremely bullish. The second most popular assumption would be the long put. This would be buying puts. This would be considered a very bearish strategy. The third most popular assumption is the short put, that is selling puts. This means the investor is selling contracts to put buyers. This would be considered a bullish strategy because he thinks the price of the underlying will go up. The fourth and least popular assumption would be selling calls. This is very volatile and not used as much because of the risk 
and it means that the investor thinks that the price of the asset will go down very dramatically. So how do options derive their value? Options derive their value based on something called the theoretical options pricing model. This value is expressed by option Greeks. So there are four main option Greeks that really will help you understand the price of an option. The four that I really want to tell you about are Delta, Theta, Gamma, and Vega. The main drivers of the price and value of an option are the current stock price, intrinsic value, time to expiration, and implied volatility of the asset. Understanding all that is really important to understanding how options derive their value. The first main Greek that I want to talk about is Delta. So Delta measures the option sensitivity to directional moves in the underlying asset. Delta can be positive or negative. It just depends on if it's a call option or a put option. Delta's value ranges from negative one to one. When the price of the asset changes, so does the uh, options uh, Delta value. Right here, you can see that the closer that the, delta, the option gets to uh, becoming in the money and closer to the strike, the current stock price, the higher the delta will be and the faster that the uh, option will accelerate in price. The next most important uh, Greek that I want to talk about is gamma. So gamma is the rate at which the delta moves. So the rate of gamma is is a options contract changes when the price of the asset changes. A contract's gamma is usually at its peak value when the asset price is quickly approaching the agreed upon price. Gamma is the acceleration of the options value while delta is just the speed at which it moves directionally with changes in asset price. Understanding gamma and delta's relationship is really key to understanding how fast option prices can change. Right here, you can see how gamma changes with how different uh, the expiration dates are of the contract. So with a three month, you can see huge changes in gamma, but with a nine month, not as much gamma change. The next option Greek I wanna talk about is theta. Theta is the time decay element of an option. It is really important to option sellers. Options suffer from time decay over the life of their option consistently. Theta is what you call and measure this time decay with. Theta accelerates more quickly, the option gets closer to its expiration date. Right here, I'm showing you an example of what I was just talking about. So the closer that the option gets from nine months to zero months, the faster the theta decay works on the option's value. So you'll see it become more exponential in the last two to three months and extreme in the one last one month. Okay, the next option Greek I want to talk about is Vega. Vega measures an option's price relative to change in volatility. Vega is based on the changes in the volatility of the option, stock, or market as a whole. Vega helps traders understand how much options are expected to move directionally. Vega is also really important when investors are trading extremely volatile underlying, such as Tesla or Nvidia, anything that moves with a lot of volatility. Vega will help investors realize when they are over, overpaying for stock or overpaying for options, I'm sorry. Right here, you can see what I mean about Vega. So the Vega is higher on the nine month because there's more volatility in the nine month option, more volatility in the long term of the underlying. So there's more unknown. The next thing I wanna talk about is intrinsic value. So the two things that make up an option's price is intrinsic and extrinsic value. So the first one is intrinsic value. And intrinsic value is the value of the option contract if it expired today. So the way the intrinsic value is calculated is by subtracting the current stock price by the agreed upon strike price. So if Apple was trading at 250 today and you owned the 240 call, your option would have $10 of intrinsic value.
The next thing I talked about is extrinsic value. Extrinsic value is calculated by subtracting the intrinsic value by the current option price. Extrinsic value is known as the risk premium of the option. Two most important factors for investors are the time premium and the t implied volatility. The closer an option gets to its expiration, the faster the extrinsic value of the option decays. So implied volatility. Implied volatility helps uh, investors understand when there's a lot of volatility uh, when you're trading in, in underlying. Uh, it's a metric 0 to 100% used to understand the market's view on whether an underlying will have a significant move. Implied volatility is calculated into the price of an option. This will help negate some risk from the option seller on volatile underlines. Implied volatility we will see a large increase in uncertain or bear markets and be low in bull markets. Implied, understanding implied volatility and its role in the price of option contracts is crucial in predicting price movement correctly. Right here you can see a, a Robinhood contract again. I just thought I'd reshow it. So right here you can see the volume on the contract, the open interest, the implied volatility, and the delta, theta, gamma, and vega, all right here. And here's a, uh, another options chain, but this is from the famous platform Thinkorswim, created by TD Ameritrade. And it's a more professional platform, institutional, but it doesn't work any different. You can also see the implied volatility, delta, uh, gamma, and vega. And you can also see the volume, if there is any, and the strike price is right here. So another popular thing in options trading is something called a hedging. So hedging is a relatively cheap way that allows investors to hedge long positions in a portfolio in cases of market downturn. So it helps neutralize the investor's overall risk. Another really popular name for this would be buying protection on a position. A hedging allows investors to hold a large amount of assets for long, longer periods to accrue more wealth and make more money from it. So what are the main differences between uh, trading stocks and, and trading options? So while similar, stock and options really aren't that common at all. When you buy stock, you're buying literal ownership in a company. But when you're buying an option, you're just buying a contractual agreement uh, for the underlying asset that you're trading. Uh, option contracts can expire completely worthless if it does not hit that strike price. Um, company stock, although although it could be worthless, it has no time limit on it. Just like option contracts have an expiration date, stock prices, stocks do not have an expiration date. There's no expiration date on Apple. Uh, stocks also allow investors to participate in things like stock splits, dividends. Um, options don't. There's nothing that options really allow investors to participate in like that. Right here you can see side by side the S&P 500 index of the 500 largest companies in the United States and then the put write index which means that they are writing puts against the major, the major ETFs or indexes such as the S&P. So just writing protection against the major ETFs makes you much more money than just putting your money in the ETFs single handedly as you can see right here. And you can also see again that um, the buy rights and all of the ETFs that focus on selling puts and selling protection, such as insurance companies, make the most money instead of investing actually in the actual assets themselves. So open interest. Open interest are the amount of contracts that are currently being held by contract buyers. 
Open interest is used to help the investors understand what the most popular and sought after options are. Many investors will use open interest to help them determine the best options to buy and sell. Understanding open interest is extremely important to having long-term trading success in predicting price pattern correctly. Right here, you can see an open interest chart that I want to show you just really quick. So right here, you can see the amount of contracts that have been added. And this means that there's institutional traders buying these contracts, assuming that they will become in the money and profitable. So you can also see right here whether there are calls or puts and the strike price of them and what they're trading. And right here is another picture I just want to show you guys to show you what it looked like in New York City in the uh, options trading pit. So options trading pit is where the institutional traders will trade. And here's a uh, short little clip I just want to show you guys to give you an idea of the madness inside of here. So my point summarized. So options are a really unique outlet available to investors. Options allow investors to manage risk on other assets. And options have immense volatility. They are highly affected by day-to-day -day price movement and move much quicker than other assets. But with this comes um, great growth that is exponential and amazing to watch happen. Thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you uh, learned something that you can take home with you today.